Hello everyone, Professor Rodriguez here, and I'm going to uh, walk you through the uh, output for the Cluster Analysis Excel template that we are using for this week's module on market segmentation. And here is the screen. Uh, on the screen you'll see what the uh, template looks like. It already has uh, some data. It has data for 10 cases and four variables. So the cases are in the rows across. You see respondent numbers or case numbers here. And then the different variables are in the columns. So we have four uh, behavioral variables. So willingness to switch. So this is brand switching. And uh, you can think of your own consumer behavior experience. Uh, in some product categories, you may be very high on your willingness to switch brands and in other categories you may be way more brand loyal and you are less willing to switch brands uh, for example if your brand is unavailable or if a competing brand is on sale so that is what that variable refers to the second one is importance of price so this kind of gets at uh, a consumer's price sensitivity uh, how important is the price variable when they are making a decision regarding this product uh, the importance of the brand. So this is uh, more regarding a person's perception of, of uh, what the brand is, how important it is. So that's another attribute that it's rating uh, as to how important it is in, in the consumer's decision making. And then last is frequency of shopping. So how frequently does the person shop? And all of these are on a scale from one to nine. So these are continuous or scale variables which is the uh, best type of variable for cluster analysis now to run the cluster analysis of course first you have to have installed the add-in the solver add-in which if we go to this little tab right here it tells us exactly how to do that so there's uh, the steps for uh, if you're a pc or a, um, you're, you use a microsoft based computer or if you have a mac so the instructions are very clear very simple just follow them and uh, then uh, reopen the Excel template after you've done that and so that way you can run the analysis and so it's very simple you just click on this button right here that says click to run cluster analysis and then at that point we get some output now this already had the output included on here but if you run the uh, the analysis initially it does take about a minute so uh, just because it seems like nothing's happening, you don't see anything in the output tab, that doesn't mean that it's not processing. So give it about a minute and uh, you know go and get a drink of water and do whatever you have to do. And when you come back, the output will be there. And so we're going to look at this output and interpret what it, uh, what it means and, and make some decisions regarding which cluster solution is best for our data. Now, remember that this data would come from a, a customer database. So if we're using data for our existing customers, or perhaps uh, you or you've hired a market research company that has obtained data from potential customers in a particular geographic area, which is where you would set up shop. So I, in either case, this is existing data either about um, customers that you already have, so people, this is uh, people that, that purchased from you already, or potential customers. Now let's look at this output. So there's going to be a solution for a one cluster segment, so this would be kind of a mass marketing approach, output for two cluster segments, for three cluster segments, for four, and for five. Now I, uh, you know, reiterate here what I reiterated in, in another uh, video. In this case, we are working with Excel. Excel does not know the meaning of your data. It doesn't know your business or your customers. So it's going to give you the output, but you as the decision maker, as the manager, have to make the uh, choice as to which cluster solution makes the most sense. So let's look at the SSE, which is the sum of squared error. Now the sum of squared error basically indicates how similar are the customers in a segment. All right, so the closer we get to zero, the closer 
the similarity is within segments. And now this is a total, so this is going to be sort of an average across all the segments. So this is the average uh, similarity within clusters for the four cluster solution, for the three cluster solution, for the two cluster, and for the one cluster. Now we can see that the sum of squared error, or the SSE, is the highest for the one cluster solution, and that makes sense, right? You've basically grouped everybody as one single market, and so you're going to have a lot of heterogeneity in terms of these different variables. Now as we go along, the rule of thumb is going to be that your sum of squared error is going to go down, because now here we've divided people into two segments, and so now we have separated all of our customers into two groups, and so within those two groups you're going to have people that are more similar to each other in terms of your four variables than over here. And then the same goes for the three cluster and the four cluster. Now we're not necessarily looking for the lowest SSE or sum of squared error. We are looking for lower. So certainly uh, we're going to choose probably between the three, four, or five cluster solution. Um, you know the uh, the change gets you know starts to decrease. Uh, it's not as as drastic of a change in the SSE as it is from here to here or from here to here. So from three onward, uh, we'll, we'll be uh, working with those as far as selecting which is the best cluster solution. And here we can look at the SSE charts. And so this is what's called uh, the elbow graph because as you can see there's sort of the, uh, the elbow here as to where there's the sharpest decrease in SSE. So it's, you know, when you get to three segment solution onward. And then over here, this is an important chart to look at as well, which is the SSE per segment. And so in this particular graph, it shows us the within segment SSE. So whereas uh, this chart over here and the graph uh, we saw earlier, it gives us the total for the entire solution. So this is, <clears throat> so this gives us, you know, for the, uh, for the one cluster solution, the two cluster solution, the three cluster solution, the four and the five cluster solution. Here we get to see the SSE for the individual clusters. So here we have the two cluster solution and we can see that the uh, SSE, which is the within segment variability, is rather high for this, which is segment two. And for segment one, it's lower. So this segment right here still has a lot of heterogeneity in it. Uh, once we get over here to the three segment uh, solution, now we can see that they're all a little bit lower, especially now the this segment right here, segment two. And remember, there's no correlation between this segment two and this segment two. Each um, cluster solution is, is completely independent of the previous one. So even though it's the same color and it's called segment two, this has nothing to do with this. Okay, so here in this solution, segment two has very low um, variability within it. So these customers within, you know, are all very close to each other, are all very similar to each other in how they responded to our four variables. Uh, the green bar right here is segment three. They also have pretty low um, SSE and the blue is also pretty low. So this is a pretty good, um, you know, pretty satisfactory in terms of SSE. So the low SSE scores indicate strong similarities between the consumers in each segment for the marketing variables that are in our data set. And if we have a SSE of zero, then that means it's either a segment of one consumer or pretty much identical responses uh, to each of the variables in the data that we are using. Now our final decision is not going to be based on SSE, but it's going to be based on uh, considering the, you know, whether these, um, the segmentation scheme makes sense. So to do that, we're going to take a look at the segmentation maps next. So we're going to click on the segmentation maps and we see here there's several maps and now these maps are going to be uh, graphing for us based on two variables. All right, so we have here the two variables of importance of price and willingness to switch. Now we could change that over here where it says which two variables do you want to graph. We can change the x axis to importance of brand and make the y axis, uh, you know, importance of price. So we can change this to three 
and this to 1. And we get now a slightly different solution. And, uh, you know, we basically want to use a little bit of our um, knowledge of our of our business and our market when choosing those two to compare. Now we can see here that in the two, well, we said we weren't going to look at the two segment solution. So now let's take a look at the three segment solution. And so here we can see that in segment one, we have uh, consumers that are pretty far out here and it's about 40% of the, uh, the customers are in that segment. And then we have these two segments are a little bit closer together in terms of uh, the, in particular, the uh, willingness to switch. So segment two brand is even less important than segment three, but both uh, have pretty much equal willingness to switch, <laughs> pretty similar. Um, so that those aren't differentiated very much there. Over here in the four segment solution, we have uh, especially a lot of differentiation between segments one, four, and two. We can see that in terms of these two variables. Now remember the cluster analysis took into consideration all four variables. So right now we're just looking at graphs. And then here we have the five segment solution where we can see again some differentiation. Now we can switch this up and again look at something different here. So let's look at uh, importance of price and importance of brand. And now we see slightly different graphs. So whereas before on the three segment uh, solution with the previous two variables we were looking at, there wasn't too much differentiation between a couple of them. Here we see a lot more differentiation. Uh, in the four segment solution, we see that these two are very similar in terms of importance of price, but they do differ a bit in terms of importance of brand. So that could be significant in terms of our marketing strategy. And then here again, we see uh, a lot of differentiation in the five segment solution. So if uh, price and brand are important components of uh, the marketing mix for my business, then uh, either this solution or this solution would uh, yield maximal benefit. Um, in, in this case, I see that here we have these two segments are, are uh, selected pretty similarly in these uh, two solutions. This segment and this segment are similar. So the fifth uh, cluster kind of comes out of uh, right here. Instead of having a single segment here, it sort of divides them up a little bit. Uh, so again, it's a matter of importance of brand differing by about a a point and a half here. So that might not be worth sort of fine tuning it that much. So I, I personally would go for the four cluster solution here. Now for your uh, cluster analysis exercise, uh, just as I described to you the rationale f based on the SSE and then based on the segmentation map, um, you know, that's what you need to include in your description of your cluster analysis uh, solution choice. And then the next step would be, since I've chosen the four segment solution, I'm going to look at the output clusters information. So I'm going to click on output clusters. Now, again, I'm going to focus on the four cluster solution. And so now I'm going to want to describe my segments, my market segments. Now, I have some important information here, which is the average, right? So I have the averages for willingness to switch across all segments right here. So this is what an average customer uh, rated on willingness to switch. This is what the average person, regardless of what segment they're in, thought about importance of price, importance of brand, and frequency of, of shopping. Um, another piece of information here is the percentage of customers that are in each segment. And so this is another <clears throat> thing you need to look at when choosing a segmentation uh, solution, a cluster solution is the, the spread here. Now, uh, interestingly, the segment one has a zero SSE. So that means again, virtually identical uh, responses. Uh, it's 10% of the respondents, which there's only 10 responses. So that means this is a segment of one <laughs> right here. So unless you have, you know, only 10 responses, which isn't uh, really desirable when, when running this kind of analysis, like I said, you want at least five, um, 
five people, five customers per variable. So if we had 20 uh, respondents, that would be good here for the four variables. So we have an SSE of zero because we have a segment of one. Um, so now taking another look at that, I don't really want a segment of just one customer. So given that new information, now I would say, no, I'm going to do a uh, the three cluster solution because I don't have any segments with just one person in it here. Uh, we have 40% uh, of the customers are here, 20% are here, and 40% are here. So it's a better spread of the um, of the, the customers across the segments. And the, the SSE is, is pretty good also. Now, focusing now on the three cluster solution, I'm going to look at the compare the segment on each variable to the average and to the other segments so that I could describe my segments. All right, so segment one, willingness to switch, I have a 7.5 here compared to this 4.7, which is the average for the entire group, that's pretty high. And uh, the highest is a nine, is the highest score, so that's pretty close to the nine. And then I look uh, across you know, at the other two clusters, and so 7.5 is much higher than these two. So I would call this first segment, I would describe them as a high willingness to switch, right? And then this first segment in terms of the importance of price, however, I can see that they only have a 3.25, the, the overall average is a five, so that's low. So that's kind of odd. They're willing to switch, but it's not because of price. So it's not that you know the uh, they're they're lured away by pricing tactics, uh, but the brand is pretty important to them. So they have a 7.25 here. The average for the entire group for the entire set of customers is 4.9. Uh, it's higher than the other two segments. Um, so this is a segment with high willingness to switch, but price isn't very important to them the brand is. So perhaps this is a group that's not very forgiving of brand transgressions. So if they have a relationship with the brand and uh, it fails them in some way, then they're quick to look for another brand that uh, will serve them better. And then this group in terms of frequency of shopping, they have a 6.25 that's higher than the, the average of five. So it's a fairly high frequency of shopping, but it's not you know, uh, significantly higher than segment two. Um, so we wouldn't say it's a very high frequency of shopping group, but still it's high, high frequency of shopping. Segment two is uh, very low in their willingness to switch. Uh, to them, price is very important. And uh, the brand is not that important. And they also have very high frequency of shopping. So it's important to know uh, what the variables are, what they mean, how the, the uh, responses were scaled. So if, a one to, if it's one to nine, what does the one mean? You know, is one low and nine is high? Because uh, all of that is necessary to interpret what these numbers mean when we are describing the segments. And then in, next week, you will be developing uh, customer personas and so you'll really need to get into detail as to describing the typical person that represents the segment in terms of the variables uh, in your uh, that you've used to segment the the marketplace